You are listening to the Namibians audio recording. Good everybody, my name is Lazarus Amkeshe and it has been almost two days ever since um, the Finance Minister Ipumbushimi tabled the 2021-2022 national budget. And today I have a very special guest to take us through the budget. It's Chantal Hasselman, PwC, Namibia's country senior partner. Chantal, welcome. Thank you, Lazarus. Thank you to our listeners. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, Chantal, this year's budget was kind of a, a very difficult one. The second of Minister Shimi's um, second tabling, actually, of in, in, in his tenure as finance minister. Can you just give us a feel, overall feel, of how this year's budget was, especially, I think, within the economic context which we find ourselves in? Yes, the, the budget as delivered on Wednesday afternoon was themed boosting resilience and recovery. Yeah. Um, what we read a lot in it is the, the essence of pushing through us as a nation and becoming mm -hmm. stronger. Yeah. Um, we also focus our dissect on Wednesday evening of the budget around the theme time to take our medicine. Yeah. Um, aligned with the, with, the, with the budget theme of the Honourable Minister, uh, we do find this theme very appropriate mm -hmm. considering the times we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, in a bit of context to, to the speech as, as read, the budget uh, makes way to allocate resources to three main domains. Mm -hmm. So high level that would be to make sure that the budget provides for the acquisition of vaccines, mm -hmm. the distribution needs that we currently have in the health sector. Yep. Um, so if, um, the top allocation then given un, um, to the Ministry of Health and Social Services, mm -hmm. um, um, budgeted as 8.1 billion. Yeah. And then a second domain was to make sure the budget allocated resources towards supporting economic recovery objectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to ensure there's a continued provision of essential public services and shielding communities. Um, specific mention of the, the current drought spells in, mm -hmm. the, in the Konene region. So a lot of um, empathy and relevance shown um, in those three domains to, to the current times in Namibia. Mm -hmm. um, the Honourable Minister also indicated projected growth in the economy, mm -hmm. uh, indicated at 2.1. However, we, we did note, a as expected, significant increase in debt stock, so that mm -hmm. outlook a mm -hmm. uh, steep increase from the already high 63% to 70%. Mm -hmm. um, the debt ratios, and we do anticipate that this will further rise until the budgeted year 2025-2026, mm -hmm. where a uh, stabilizing plateau can be expected. Okay. So the cost of servicing that is worrisome yeah. um, and definitely warrants further consideration and conversation. Okay. Um, I, think, I think it's good that you've mentioned that uh, we are taking our very own medicine. But then again, just let's quickly go back again and let's look at what you expected the minister to say or what you expected the budget to be and what was delivered. How do you, how is your assessment? Yes, so yes, we always have that run up in terms of expectations, yeah. um, not just us, but, but um, all, all experts out there. Yeah. So uh, we were quite on point with not expecting in increases in tax rates, like for example, the 15% value added tax rate, yeah. um, as well as the um, corporate tax rates. Mm -hmm. uh, we did anticipate um, uh, upwards movement in the individual tax brackets yeah. to avoid bracket creep, and mm -hmm. especially in the times where we now have high food inflation, yeah. uh, dis disappointing that, that uh, there was no mention of that, it mm -hmm. did not come through, yeah. but what was welcomed uh, or would be welcomed is the mentioned um, drop in corporate tax rates, mm -hmm. so that is for companies other than mining companies. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, then we were also very um, glad to see that the much talked about or previously mentioned increase in mm -hmm. the tax deductibility in terms of contributions for pension, provident fund and, and educational policies. Yeah. So that 40,000 has been since forever, yeah. ever since <laughs> I joined the tax conversation. Yeah. 
Um, so this, the, the, the significant jump to 150,000 mm -hmm. allowable deduction per person would definitely speak towards the intent of the minister to, to have an increased um, savings culture yeah. um, uh, within Namibia. So that is it's good to note. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we also comment, Honourable Minister, on the careful balance that was done in, in decreasing um, so uh, both yes so so it's inevitable for tax revenue projections to decrease for mm -hmm. the current times that yeah. we're in mm -hmm. but that was then sufficiently made up for through the um, for fiscal consolidation on the expenditure yeah. Yeah. side mm -hmm. so that the anticipated deficit for for this new budget year it's anticipated that we will have a decrease mm -hmm. um, having a deficit of 8.6 percent of GDP which mm -hmm. is lower than the prior year okay um, I think other than you have mentioned, rightly mentioned that um, the health budget was around about 8.1 billion, but what are the other key figures that you really would pull out um, of this year's budget? It's a very high level. Uh, mm -hmm. More detail of this is available on the PwC Namibia website mm -hmm. where we uh, have a, a presentation on our dissect of the budget. Yeah. Um, view, uh, listeners more than welcome to peruse. But for, for, for today, a quick yeah. rundown would be um, the budget uh, budgeted announced revenue or projected revenue mm -hmm. is coming in at 52 billion. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, that funding to be spent on expenditure yeah. at uh, budgeted at 68 billion. Mm -hmm. So that um, includes the operational as well as the development budget. Yeah. Um, and that is the, 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 the resulting budgeted deficits which I just referred to mm -hmm. um, at 15 Billion. Then um, also a last figure worth mentioning is the, the anticipated debt stock increase. Yeah. So that, that to be precise is an anticipated increase of 19% to 130 billion. Um, and that is where my prior comment that the cost of servicing mm -hmm. uh, the debt becomes crucial. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chantal, quickly just on um, taxes again. Um, were there any new proposals that were made? And I think just a little bit to touch base again on corporate tax cut um, that the minister announced. What do you, what is an ideal tax rate for you? Yes. So uh, a quick rundown. The first part of your question on new proposals. Yep. Um, quite uh, uh, a few mentions. So a mm -hmm. quick rundown is the introduction of a ten percent withholding tax on local dividends earned. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is good to know this is not a new announcement. But mm -hmm. with this and uh, with this um, re mention. Uh, there is the insurance that the dividends are not to be taxed more than once, which mm -hmm. was uh, one of the primary concerns yeah. uh, raised by stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is the good uh, announcement on the increased deductibility on pension fund contributions, yeah. including the study policies as mm -hmm. well. So it's not just the pension fund and retirement energy mm -hmm. contributions. So that is from forty to 150000 Namibian dollars. Yeah. Then there is an introduction of 15% VAT on asset managers mm -hmm. that uh, manage listed um, securities, for yeah. example. So the aim with this would be just to have um, uh, fairness or equitable grounds with mm -hmm. those asset managers that only listed, uh, uh, that only that manages non-listed mm -hmm. um, assets. Yeah. Um, then we have the enforcement of um, efficient tax administration on withholding taxes on services mm -hmm. by uh, requiring taxpayers now mm -hmm. to provide proof of actual tax withheld from, from payments. Mm -hmm. uh, another enforcement will be strengthening the administration of an existing tax, fry tax, fry yeah. tax provisions. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a review of the withholding tax on interest from unit trust funds mm -hmm. paid to uh, Namibian companies. Then there is welcomed announcement of possible zero rating on the supply of sanitary pads yeah. to enhance affordability by the mm -hmm. gold child. Um, and lastly, the one you already referred to is considering reducing the corporate income tax rate. That's for our non-mining companies mm -hmm. uh, in the next MTEF specifics uh, are around that. So, so everybody's asking about yeah. the extent to which we can expect a reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, the speech did allude to we can expect that announcement during the mid-year review in October, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we just assume that on the fiscal side there is more intervention and work needed around what we can afford. Yeah. So on that <laughs> note, so just to give some context, mm -hmm. the, the South African budget speech read the 24th of February mm -hmm. uh, also announced a reduction in the uh, corporate, corporate tax yeah. rate for mm -hmm. non-mining entities. So there is currently a 28%, mm -hmm. drop of 1% to 27%. Mm -hmm. 
But then we have an economy like Botswana, um, almost similar size to that of Namibia. Yeah. They rate currently um, at 22%, mm -hmm. so already much lower. Yeah. Historic downwards adjustments for Namibia has been a reduction of 1% with mm -hmm. every opportunity. So yeah. that's from 35% uh, currently now to the 32% mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah. So it might be an easy guess would be obvious 1% Lazarus yeah. to 31%. <laughs> yeah. But just to give some context uh -huh. that uh, in terms of our immediate SACO members yeah. uh, or neighbors, mm -hmm. we have... Um, uh, there is there is room for reduction, yeah. but it is an affordability discussion mm -hmm. as we we have pressure on the collection of other taxes as well. Another thing that the minister talked about was um, zero rating VAT on sanitary pads. Um, I think other than that, them becoming cheaper, I really want to kind of understand um, what impact would this have on treasury um, um, inflow, especially on the tax that used to be recovered on that. And I think, do you think? We'll now start to see where these very necessary goods are going to be there going forward. Um, yes, so this is a, this is a, an announcement that was not mentioned in prior year budget speech, mm -hmm. like the possible zero rating, uh, removing the zero rating of sugar, for yeah, example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's indeed um, much welcome, and not just um, myself being a female as well, <laughs> yeah. uh, but to the girl child and the affordability on these products. So that so globally, that would be the purpose of when you have goods zero rated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you look at the current zero rated goods, it's centered around um, how, uh, goods that are consumed regularly yeah. um, and deemed like the basic food stuff list, for mm -hmm, example. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's essential buying in households mm -hmm. where it makes a substantial difference in, in speci specifically lower income households. Yeah, yeah. So, so having um, such a commodity on the zero rating list definitely speaks to the needs of the users of the commodity. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, so we commend Honourable Minister on that yeah. and look forward for the, the actual uh, change to the Act to come through. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of from a fiscal side, so whenever an article moves from 15% to zero rating, mm -hmm. VAT being so transactional, it yeah. is as of that date. Mm -hmm. There should be, um, there would be, should be a drop in mm -hmm. the price of the article mm -hmm. from the retailer side. Yeah. So the onus is now on retailers to not inflate their price yeah, also yeah. with a fifteen yeah. percent, uh -huh. because then to the to the consumer or the client, there's mm -hmm. there's no real impact, which yeah. is not the intent of the legislator here. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say that benefit is passed through mm -hmm. uh, to the consumers, then it's an immediate drop in, in inflow of VAT to yeah. the fiscus. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, important to note that once you have an article, the local sale is zero rated, mm -hmm. then there's no more import VAT also. So we know all of the sanitary pads in Namibia are unfortunately yeah, imported, imported yeah. with no local manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the the importers would also have a not a, a tax benefit but a cash flow benefit mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. this one article less of yeah. which they have to pay and then reclaim the import mm -hmm. VAT. So, but to the fiscus again, there is this um, uh, might be a, a loss of okay. interest if I can yeah. call it because <laughs> lesser import Income, VAT yeah. is also now received upon yeah. importation already on these commodities. Yeah. So that is why it's 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 always a sensitive decision of mm -hmm. having moving an article from 15% to zero rated mm -hmm. because there is the, that immediate loss of, of tax revenue to the fiscus. Okay. Um, I think I still want to take you back again on something you mentioned a little bit earlier on um, a savings culture. I think the one part is the minister had said again is we said it again this this year, I mean, in this current budget, that there will be another increase on um, pension fund um, deductions from uh, 40,000 to 150,000. And then other items, such as the 15% on listed asset management, was also again re, uh, re, re announced. Um, I think there's been quite for some time ever since, even when the former minister, Kale, was, was, was on board, he had table, I mean, he has announced this. Um, so, what do you think is the this is delaying this implementation. Um, I I know also through our involvement, for example, with the ICANN Tax Committee, that um, there has been a lot of stakeholder engagement mm -hmm. um, on um, these tax uh, proposals yeah. over the years, ever since mm -hmm. it was first announced. Yeah. 
So not so much on the, the, the change on deductibility of pension fund contributions as mm. with the change, uh, anticipated change for the asset managers. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so on, on the tax deductibility of pension fund contributors, maybe the discussion was around the extent to which should it should the jump be from 40 to 150,000. Yeah. And, and I think as the years progress, the need um, to cultivate, to have a savings culture for mm -hmm. people taking care of unfortunate events and their old age and um, children, educational needs, mm -hmm. um, that need just pressed and, and brought more urgency mm -hmm. that this must come through and no further um, delay can be caused pondering on the extent to which we must uh, they must increase the mm -hmm. 40,000. So, so it's it's definitely a welcomed announcement to see that it's it's high up on the agenda. Yeah. So it is now just back to uh, the uh, minister and um, inland revenue in terms mm -hmm. of how quick this proposal can come through. Mm -hmm. Um, it will obviously have an effective date also, so yeah. we, uh, all of us now already missed out on mm -hmm. February 21, yeah. Yeah. or might be that we missed out um, on the February 21 tax year, but most of those returns are also only due June 2021, mm -hmm. but most taxpayers did also not plan around having yeah. such a high deductibility. So. Yeah. Uh, if it can come through that as Namibians, we can get the benefit by the February 2022 tax mm -hmm. year. That would be excellent. Um, the second announcement on possible VAT on the on the fees of, of asset managers that, that manages listed securities mm -hmm. um, is not such an easy... So you can have the legal drafting and have it as legislation, but the actual play out of that in the industry mm -hmm. is is can be complex just yeah. the implementation mm -hmm. because it would impact asset managers that's never been exposed to the the, the vet administration and yeah, compliance yeah. process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and with indirect taxes being a transactional tax it's mm -hmm. it's it, it affects the bookkeeping it yeah. affects the documentation flow mm -hmm. it affects the legal documents yeah. to 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 get those entities on board that's mm -hmm. one element mm -hmm. of the conversation the other element is the impact of having that legislation mm -hmm. because as much as with the first announcement on the pension fund deductions there we cultivate a a savings culture or yeah. investment culture mm -hmm. but with this amendment on the other hand now the the impact would be that the 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 the, uh, the fees associated mm -hmm. with my investment being managed yeah. would now be increase, pushed yeah. up yeah. so it's sort of like it's 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 the opposite message from the other yeah. announcement or proposal which i just discussed yeah. again. so that's effectively what would happen mm -hmm. to 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 investors and or investments mm -hmm. Um, so those are the, the key technical considerations that, that had to be taken into account mm -hmm. um, for, for these proposals to, to, to be proposed and, and uh, we anticipate it to be legislated, yes. Okay. Uh, I think in, in the previous update we had mentioned something around VAT and COVID-19 materials, vaccines, PPE. Um, it was, uh, I think from your end, was it disappointing to see that you didn't make the speech yesterday? Or in the current budget speech, not yesterday. Yeah. So um, yes, as 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 mentioned during that talk, I think it was about two weeks ago. We yeah. also the article of fifth fifth uh, of March in the Namibian. We mm -hmm. had the placement of a listing of countries. It's it's mostly EU countries at this yeah. stage that's mm -hmm. already uh, joined the conversation yeah. and have legislation giving relief specific VAT relief mm -hmm. to end users on, on, on when they purchase masks and sanitizers. Mm -hmm. uh, so the moment you have that relief, then the, the, the product is more affordable yeah. to the end users. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, um, an avenue would have been for, for the budget mm -hmm. speech to, um, to make way, yeah. um, just to expedite any such uh, proposals and amendments to mm -hmm. the Act. Mm -hmm. uh, however, yes, as you mentioned, disappointed for that not to, to be included, mm -hmm. as it is in the current times also a daily commodity, yeah. where that households is, yeah. need to make sure, especially mm -hmm. larger households, lower income households, everybody mm -hmm. needs to make sure that you have um, sufficient masks, mm -hmm. that you have sanitizer available, um, and then, so yeah, so it is a current need. And last time when we had the severe drought conditions mm -hmm. countrywide, we saw the, the VAT Act stepping up and having zero rated yeah. 
imports and local sale when uh, fodder and leek was mm-hmm. being imported. Mm-hmm. So even if it's a temporary relief with a sunset clause, yeah. like um, the countries I refer to mm-hmm. globally have a sun- most have a sunset clause of December 2022, mm-hmm. when these commodities would go back go to back, their yeah. higher original mm-hmm. impo- uh, VAT rates. Mm-hmm. So, but definitely no need for it to be the end of the conversation. <laughs> There's still time for the minister yeah. to consider uh-huh. uh, uh, such relief to, yeah. to us. Okay. Um, one other key component um, of, of what the minister said yesterday again um, was that the ministers that arrived um, the 7th of April, um, just a few days ahead, for the launch of the Namibia Revenue Agency. Um, should the tax community be excited about this development? Yes, indeed, Lazarus. Yeah. Uh, we definitely are uh, uh-huh. at PwC. So, uh, yes, so taxpayers, practitioners, um, we, uh, we do look forward um, for NAMRA to promote a more efficient tax administration mm-hmm. and collection as well. Yeah. Uh, so we do know that um, uh, the agency, it is the year of being established mm-hmm. And uh, along with that is a lot of preparation and the, whole, the, the recruitment process. Yeah. And um, so taking that into consideration, mm-hmm. uh, but there is still the, um, the hope of, of having efficiency um, in, on tax administration and collection times. Mm. We, are, we are in a time where, they, where that is definitely needed. Yeah. And we already have the ITES electronic filing mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. So in, in, in the mix of the ingredients needed, yeah. we, we, we now need the semi-autonomous revenue agencies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think just still on NAMRA, um, there has been, I think, allegations and talks that the inland revenue is kind of slacking on, on administrative issues, um, especially on the collection side as well. And revenues, I think, for this year and for the coming year, the expectations are kind of low that revenue inflow kind of nosedive. Um, do you think NAMRA, would, if, if, if all goes as planned and if all they, they all work out and efficient as possible, could it be a lifesaver um, and possibly push us out of uh, very high deficits in the coming year? Um, I just referred to NAMRA as, as being in a year of, of being established. Yeah. So I, I would not um, think that we should put um, all our hope on mm-hmm. the fact that we can have NAMRA established in this, in this budget here. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of external factors to consider, like you alluded to, the, the current economic times. Mm-hmm. And when we dis- dissected the budget yesterday, um, the projected uh, different tax revenues mm-hmm. per the budget uh, did display the drop of, of anticipated SACO revenue to mm-hmm. 30%. Yeah. So th- those are, um, that is a drop uh, from 22 billion to 14 mm-hmm. billion in SACO revenue. So it's unexpected, unusual, mm-hmm. low levels. Mm-hmm. So those are significant external factors where uh, the revenue agency would also not have a direct control over yeah. looking at the mm-hmm. SACO pool still being our main contributor. Mm-hmm. So it's the onus will be, for example, on on the agency to make sure that the other taxes that is within their direct ambit of collecting Mm -hmm. on existing legislation, that's now the VAT, the income tax, and the corporate taxes, Mm -hmm. uh, the three main ones, that there is efficiency in collecting those taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, they can definitely uh, play a role, will play a role, can play a role, have an impact, but it might be that that the... um, external economic climate and mm-hmm. environment um, have a great have a greater influence on on the anticipated declining in tax and pressure on tax revenue. Mm. Okay, um, still on tax revenue. Um, I think we're going to stick here for quite some time. But the last question, really, on tax revenue. I think with revenue is decreasing on one end, and then you've got expenditure that is still not kept in quite in check, um, and this is leading to a very high. Um, and never rising public debt. Um, does this perhaps suggest um, possible high taxes in the future to make up for that difference? So Chantel, let me, let's go back a little bit to revenue again. Um, we've seen that government debt is rising and that's basically um, largely because um, revenue is decreasing and 
does this possibly indicate that there could be uh, high taxes in the future as the economy recovers, just to make up for that um, ever decreasing revenue and then also to decrease further public debt? Well, we, Lazarus, we, we do not anticipate that to be in the, in the immediate future. Yeah. Um, for example, in the, in the NTF, as, as mentioned in the minister's budget speech. Mm -hmm. Um, as um, the intent with the current announced reduction in, in, in taxes mm -hmm. uh, or company taxes at yeah. least would mm -hmm. uh, be um, to revive the economy and kickstart the economy yeah. um, where more job opportunities can also be created mm -hmm. and the dignity of employees can be restored that's been heavily impacted yeah. so we also don't foresee that um, that it now is the time to for example have that 16% VAT rate yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, there is also evidence in, in other similar economies that yeah. we, once there is a revival of the economy, that mm -hmm. one can expect um, a sharp increase in, in some of those taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, what what um, could be uh, more, if I can call it, lower hanging fruit for, for the fiscus would be existing legislation that's not effectively yeah. administered and collected. Mm -hmm. The speech yesterday alluded to freight tax yeah. as an existing uh, direct tax, yeah. um, and uh, then there's always been transfer pricing since mm -hmm. 2005 yeah. already. So yes, a, a complex tax to administer mm -hmm. and specialize in, uh, but it is existing legislation mm -hmm. and um, uh, always a topical content looking at uh, base erosion of, of profits yeah. and, and money leaving the country. Mm -hmm. So that would be existing legislation that can be more effectively administered yeah. as opposed to a sharp rise or increase or introduction of new taxes. But then there's also like yesterday's announcement on, mm -hmm. on local um, tax on local dividends earned. Yeah. That is a conversation of Namibia also now joining that conversation where we mm -hmm. never had that tax. Yeah, yeah. So there's this other taxes that um, um, that is long existing but mm -hmm. has never been introduced in Namibia so it might also be that the fiscus would consider for example capital gains tax mm -hmm. once the economy is revived yeah. uh, or a, a, um, a increased wealth tax mm -hmm. uh, just to, to, to mention a few mm -hmm. so uh, we definitely should be cognizant mm -hmm. of that but I would attach a more long term thinking to that okay Okay, thank you so much, Chantal, for that um, whole overview and just um, in-depth uh, kind of analysis on the budget. Maybe your last comments on, on the whole budget. Um, thank you, Lazarus. Yes, so as, as concluded by the Honourable Minister of Finance in the, he quoted the famous words of, of late um, Nelson Mandela, mm. um, it always seems impossible until it is done. Okay. So we once again commend Honourable Minister in presenting um, a budget which ignites hope in Namibia, yeah. uh, in Namibians, on our own road to recovery. Mm -hmm. um, there is just um, yeah some caution that it is time to act out on on all that good intent, mm -hmm. as uh, we can see the budget is also packed with a lot of good intent. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, the, the mention of the various structural policy reforms. Mm -hmm. So to have the likes of the Namibian Investment Propo uh, Promotion Bill tabled, the Banking Institutions Bill tabled, mm -hmm. the Finance Public Procurement Amendment Bill tabled, yep. uh, a review to the Financial Institutions and Marketings Act, mm -hmm. so a continuation of the Public Wage Bill. Yep. Uh, for, for those, the proposed uh, voluntarily early retirements and net vacancy freezements to come out, mm -hmm. looking at an optimal structure of, for government CMAS yeah. also, mm -hmm. uh, which is being talked about a lot. So, so for all of that to, um, to play out so that the, the, in, the good intent uh, with, with those legislations can also come through mm -hmm. uh, in, in our economy, that, that is crucial. Mm -hmm. um, and then also there are other factors that are factors that um, speaks to opportunity that lies ahead for us as Namibia. Yeah. So we shouldn't sit and sit still, yeah. we should rise. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the speech of the minister started off with the, with the mentioning of the, the January um, 
signing of the Africa Free Trade Agreement yeah. and mm. quoting the exact numbers of the African markets and yeah. end users that as a nation we would have access to with mm -hmm. easier uh, trade regulations yeah. as well. Mm. So those are all opportunities that uh, both the public and the private sector should pull together at um, to mine those opportunities. So thank you so much for this opportunity mm -hmm. <laughs> to me and uh, thank you to our listeners as well.